Okay, so thank you so much all for being here. Okay, so today I'll be talking about random surfaces <laughs> and uh, conformal field theory. So to introduce this topic, uh, maybe we can say, so goal of probability would be just understand the uh, universality of random phenomenon. And for instance, if we look at functions of one dimension, you know that, well, okay, there's the Brownian motion, which is like a canonical random function. It appears as a scaling limit of for instance, simple random walks, and it appears in many contexts, when in a sense it captures some universal behavior. Uh, now, if you make, if we do in two dimensions, if you make your time space two-dimensional, you look at functions from R2 to R, then the most canonical uh, random function here in a sense, what's called the Gaussian free field, it also appears in many contexts. So here you have a simulation of it on the uh, bottom right. Uh, and it will be really uh, the building block of everything we do. So let me explain to you a bit more what it is. Okay, so the Gaussian free field, you can, you can think of it defined on any, think of S, a Riemann surface, say with a, with a Riemannian metric G. It's not so important, the metric G, but okay. So the Gaussian free field X would be, in physics, you would define it by what's called a formal path integral which is you say that uh, an expectation of any functional of the free field is going to be computed by integrating over all maps from your surface to R against some like formal, you have a formal uh, uniform measure and along with some E to minus an energy functional where for the free field, the energy functional is most basic energy. It's just the kinetic energy, you just integrate the gradient square. So in more uh, mathematical terms, you can make sense of this uh, just by just consider the Laplacian operator on your surface. You can uh, diagonalize it, have uh, eigenvalues, eigenfunctions, and basically the Gaussian free field then corresponds to this series where you just put a independent normal Gaussian random variable in front of every mode of the Laplacian. Um, and you can connect at least this physics definition. If you integrate by parts on the gradient, you can connect it to, you can recover just diagonalizing the Laplacian. Um, so the Gaussian free field is actually not uh, defined point wise. It's, uh, it lives in the space of Schwartz distribution. Uh, and you can also see this, we can also write it's a Gaussian process. We can write the covariance and it's covariance, another way to think of it is just the, the Green's function of the Laplacian. Um, and it's like locally, it's logarithmically, it's always logarithmic, in two dimensions, it will be logarithmically correlated plus like a continuous part. Um, okay, so that's hope it's clear uh, this for the Gaussian free field. Um, so now let's look at this problem of, okay, so what is a uh, random surface in two dimensions? So a first uh, answer was given to this question in, in physics in Polyakov's famous uh, 81 paper. And his model of a random surface, it's a random Riemannian metric tensor. So he writes, I have the red equation there, where you just take any metric tensor G, you can write it into this form of like a conformal factor, which is just a positive function. But you have a positive function. You write it for our purposes, e to the gamma x. And then the G hat of tau is like a fixed uh, reference metric. So it will, that depends on your moduli parameter tau. So if you have, uh, let's say, if you don't have moduli, like if you have the Riemann sphere, then just think of G hat as being like the fixed uh, spherical metric. But if there is moduli, then this tau, uh, this G hat tau parameterizes the moduli sphere. And then, so the model to get, basically you're gonna get a random G and to make it random, uh, you're gonna take this function X here in the conformal factor to be your Gaussian free field. And so, and this, yeah, there's also a gamma, which is, uh, so this is a one parameter of the model depends on this one parameter, which is fixed throughout in zero two. Okay, and then if there's moduli, the tau will also be random. Um, so then in probability, like there's kind of two ide main ideas to make sense of this more rigorously. One would be in the discrete, one in the continuum. So in the discrete, you can discretize your surface you get these nice pictures here. Okay, so this you can do is called the random planar map discretization of the surface. 
And uh, basically, it's a random graph embedded on the surface, modular homeomorphisms. We have these nice pictures by Nicolas Curien in uh, Bettinelli for the sphere and the, uh, like one topology of the sphere and one the topology of the torus. You see, like, it kind of has fractal structure. Um, but so, uh, what I've worked on for the most part is more, we can also make sense directly, directly in the continuum of the geometry that's given by this uh, exponential of the Gaussian free field. So here really you have the, yeah, the concrete realization of the idea on the previous slide is, so you fix a parameter, so gamma is just fixed in uh, zero two. And then let's say very concretely, you have a domain D in the plane and you want to assign to it a random area, then you just integrate the Lebesgue measure over D, but along with this, like, uh, just this function, which is this density, which is e to the gamma x. Now, since x is the random Gaussian free field, this, like, assigns a random area to D. And same with a curve. Uh, you can measure its length this way. So, so when so, gamma is bigger than two, these become two irregular. Uh, yes. So there's so the, yes. I'm going to say so. The reason is yeah. There's a phase transition. Gamma equals two. The reason is that so actually, as I said, the Gaussian free field is a uh, is not a pointwise. It's a Schwartz distribution. So there is uh, this is not like you need to make sense of this exponential. And when you do so, you have to do like renormalization and uh, regularization, renormalization. And it turns out this object, if you go past gamma equals two, then you're like kind of in a different phase. It's like behaves completely different. But we keep, uh, it's because of this uh, regularization issue that gamma is in zero two. And here you have also some plots of what these look like, like for gamma equals one, gamma equals 1.8. Uh, it's like rougher here because the scale is bigger. What is the regularization exception? Could be, they all kind of give the same limit. Like you could think of, Either do a smoothing up against a small ball, or you can also truncate like a Fourier series or the modes. You can do like they're all known more or less to get the same limiting object. So now let's try to prove some uh, theorems on this object. So, very natural question is if you just take the unit circle and so you measure its length with this random measure, you're going to get. Its total length is going to be a random variable. So you want to know like what is the law of this random variable of this length of the circle. Um, so this result gives you the answer, um, which is that this total length of the circle is up to a constant, just a, an exponential random variable, parameter one to some power. So this was predicted in physics, in statistical physics, actually a different community by uh, Fyodor Hoxton Bouchot. And they do these, these techniques where you can, for every fixed gamma, you can compute integer moments. And there are, but there are only finitely many of them. And you can do some analytic, some formal analytic continuation, but it's not rigorous. So to prove it, I'll explain this at the end. I used the connection to the Liouville uh, conformal field theory. Um, okay. I can show you another result that I did earlier. Uh, this year with uh, Shin and Morris, um, which is we give an answer. So what is this law of this moduli? Uh, what does it look like in this, or here's a formula. So in the case of an annulus. So again, you have these models of the, we have random annulus. Oh yeah, so I should say, so the moduli space of the annulus is like a one parameter family. So you can have like a positive tau and then just parameterize your annulus in this way. And then you have this model of like random surfaces with the annulus topology. And you can take, so from planar maps, you can take scaling limit and Im embed them in the annulus. These are like highly non-trivial uh, results, right? But uh, in any case, you can, you, you obtain a random modulus. And so here there's a formula, the uh, side shape is not so important, but so for fixed inner and outer boundary lengths being A and B, uh, you have a uh, law of this moduli, which was predicted in these works in physics in the 80s of uh, like uh, 2D quantum gravity that followed Polyakov's original paper. Do you use <clears throat> the fact that uh, the determinant of the Laplacian 
is also expressible in terms of the eta function in this. Yes, it appears. It appears. And there's a in these things, this theories, they have this decomposition. Yeah, they're, they're in, in your group. Yeah, it appears somewhere. Yeah, we use it. Yes, we have to use this formula. Um, so maybe now just uh, let me also say a little bit about uh, what is this uh, Liouville conformal field theory that appeared in our uh, proof. So this in physics also originates back to the work of uh, Polyakov. And what it is, this say, okay, this is kind of simplified uh, writing of it, but basically what you're going to do is take your Gaussian free field X and then you reweight its law. You reweight it by the total area it assigns to your surface. So now it's five here is the Liouville field. It's expectation of any function of this field is the expectation of any function of Gaussian free field, but like times this weight, which is, it's like you're adding this in your energy function, which is, this is the total volume it assigns to the surface in this model. And so now you no longer have a free field theory, it's more complicated, but it's gonna be a conformal field theory, which means it's still uh, gonna be integrable or solvable in some way. Um, so let's see uh, the story, how the story goes next. So. Conformal field theory, the framework was introduced in physics in 84 by Kevin Koyakov, uh, Zamo Shikov. It's kind of this, this uh, systematic study of all the two dimensional quantum field theories that have uh, conformal symmetry. And two dimensions, they're like uh, conformal symmetries, like an infinite dimensional group of symmetries, but it's very constraining for the observables of the theory. And in particular, it's gonna, this framework allows you to compute all the correlation functions. Uh, so what are these, yeah, these observables that are computable? You should think of them, it's like a, a joint Laplace transform of your field at different points. So like on the surface, you select some points, zi, and for every point you have some weights, and then you form this like joint Laplace transform of the field at these points. And so in principle, if you know all these observables, all these functions, you've completely determined completely characterize your field uh, five. And these are indeed computable by a procedure called in physics, the conformal bootstrap, which is kind of, uh, so you compute any correlation on any genus surf, uh, any higher genus surface, any Riemann surface, based on like some integration over two pieces, which are structure constants, which are like the most basic correlations. And this setup is the three point function on the sphere. And then some conformal blocks, which are kind of some functions that are just completely uh, specified by, uh, by the uh, conformal symmetries. Um, so I can give you this. So right here, uh, so in probability, there have been many like works to try to make sense of this program. So you have to like define rigorously the will conformal field theory and then so very recently, there's a uh, Guillermo Kupianen, Rod and Vargas who proved um, one of these bootstrap formulas for the uh, four point here. It's written for the four point function on the sphere. Now, actually, last year they uh, established also like any point on any Riemann surface. But, so here's the formula written on the, the four point function on the sphere is computed by some integration over some spectrum of these C functions as a three point function. And then here F is the conformal block. So there's these bootstrap formulas, this you can think of them, there's like, they correspond to like, if you take a Riemann surface, you can do a pair of pants decomposition. You cut up your surface into like pair of pants, then you can, uh, these bootstrap integrals uh, correspond to the decomposition. And then every individual piece will correspond to a structure constant, a three point function. And they're like glued together with the conformal blocks. And so, yeah, then these ideas can be used at least for any, for a lot of moduli. On, uh, we use a, a bootstrap statement on the annulus proved by Wu. And uh, yeah, so these, these four ideas go into the theorems I showed you. Um, okay, maybe just to finish, I can just say I had two outlooks. Uh, I, like, one thing we think about is trying to do. The result we have on annulus, we can try to do it on any Riemann surface, just study kind of these uh, 
integrating over the modular uh, space. Uh, and also, the work, we did study these conformal blocks uh, using probability as well and uh, prove some of their like modular transformation properties. Okay, uh, I'll stop here. Thank you. Questions? Among the different possible models you can imagine for a random surface, uh, what kind of characterizes this one that you're studying? And, uh, well, you said the canonical random surface. Uh, is there some sense in which it's a, in what sense? I, I guess, uh, uh, so I guess it corresponds really to doing these discrete uh, geometries, like you do a random graph. Uh, also, you can do, um, you can decorate it with like different models, like uh, you can add like, uh, models of uh, statistical physics, which is called physicists call like adding matter to the model. And then you will like uh, have a different uh, law of your random player map on your graph. Then, uh, and then in the continuum, it uh, corresponds to choosing uh, like different values of the, the gamma. I guess there's really a large class here of these. Uh, just doing any like statistical physics model on a random graph in the sense will although it's very hard to show the scaling limit, it's not true. It will converge to these sort of like fractal geometries. For some gamma. Yes. So like for instance, uh, gamma equals square root of eight thirds is like uh, no statistical physics model, just uh, in the form. And then like gamma equals square root of three is like easing model. So each of these models we have heard of, they like correspond to different values of this parameter. You didn't mention any low forward near area. Is that because it's trivial or is it? Yeah, we have a risk. Yeah, we also worked on this. Uh, yeah, if you condition like the boundary length, so here you know the area of the, the uh -huh. boundary, if you condition on the boundary being one, the area is follows some like uh, gamma distribution. Type. You take multiple circles and compute their joint distribution. Like in, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> on the same circle, cut it in two, or we can do the most general thing we've done is like you take a circle, and you can have like kind of a, well, it's not exactly the joint law, but you have some functional that's basically looking at like different pieces of the circle. Like you cut it into arcs and have joint laws of arcs um, and of the area. And I put it into like two circles. Yeah, never mind. I think you. Yeah. I mean, when you go to more complicated moduli, yes. then this formula you're using, this eta function being <coughs> log dead. There is no formula there in the physics, if I remember, meaning people don't know how to write down log depth on a Riemann surface explicitly in terms of maybe you put the curve inside the Jacobian and then some beta functions, and that doesn't work. So I don't know what formula you're hoping to come up with. Yeah, we're still, um, yeah higher genus is still like very open. Yeah. And that is what one thing you were hoping. Yeah, we are, we are right. Yes. Okay. Okay, there doesn't seem to be any other questions. So, thanks.